Have you ever looked at all the gear musicians use and wonder, how does it all work? My name's Dustin and my family and I are setting out on a quest to inspire both adult and kid musicians to create new sounds together and learn all about what it takes to produce great music. We'd like to invite you along on the journey as we explore the gear professional studios, musicians, and hobbyists use to create their art. We'll take a close-up look at the gear and ask, What's this button do? Hello everyone and welcome to What's This Button Do? I'm your host, Dustin. This is our inaugural episode, so we wanted to take a moment to tell you a little bit about the program and what you're going to be seeing over the coming weeks. What's This Button Do? was inspired several years ago by my, at that time, four-year-old daughter. I was a guitarist. I, I had a little uh, tiny studio set up in my basement. You're going to see that in a bit. Um, and I was downstairs playing guitar and my daughter ran down and started fiddling with the knobs on an EQ pedal that I was using at the time. And just was wiggling everything around. It completely made my sound go crazy. And I was going, no, 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 no. And she goes, what's this button do, daddy? And hit some more knobs. And all of a sudden, the sound that I was playing changed massively into something beautiful. And it just gave me this moment of inspiration where I thought, oh my gosh, I would have never tried those settings in my life. But wow, what a cool sound. And it was at that moment that What's This Button Do was born. Our show is dedicated to taking a look at all of the gear that musicians use every day and finding inspiration in that gear. So many of the demo channels out there give you great ideas of what a pedal sounds like and at its best and, and what they think a pedal should sound like. But we want to go a little different than that. We want to take both studio gear, outboard gear, and pedals and take a look at all the different combinations of sounds and maybe even inspire you to make some unusual sounds and unusual combinations of pedals that you may have never even thought to take in a certain direction. We also wanted to create a studio space that was family friendly so that our friends and kids in the neighborhood and anybody who just wanted to record music that may not have access to a professional studio would be able to access in a fun and friendly manner. So that's what we've created here today. Now, this first episode is not going to be so much about the gear. It's really about the creation of the studio itself. We've been thinking about this for so long and trying to find a time that we could make it work. And recently, last year, we had a family member move out of our home and it opened up a 10 by or about 15 by 20 foot room in our basement that we decided this is it. This is the time that we can convert this into a studio and make it happen. So picked up a couple GoPros and over the course of us creating this space, I've been shooting some videos and I want to share them with you today to show you a little bit about what it takes to turn a room inside of a home into a studio that you can use to record both live music and to process sounds and mix and master in. And hopefully just to help you find a little inspiration if you're trying to carve out a little space for yourself in your home or your apartment so that you can create music. It's amazing to see where technology has gotten us over the last few years. When I was growing up living in an apartment, I was so afraid to even turn on my guitar amplifier because I knew it would disturb the neighbors. Even if I had it set at a one or a two, if I turned on a fuzz pedal or a distortion, Lord knows that there were gonna be complaints. But technology's come so far right now with things like the Universal Audio Oxbox, IR loaders, plugins, even like the Strymon Iridium, where you can actually record amazing sounding music without making a tiny little sound in your room or your apartment. So we're gonna explore a lot of those things, but this first video is all about showing you how we created our environment that you're gonna be seeing in future videos. Now we want this to be an interactive show, so we'd love to know what you'd like us to cover in future episodes, whether it be looking at equalization or learning about compression, or maybe how to mix outboard gear with your current pedal board structure, or how to do silent re recordings. Anything that you can think of that you'd love to see us cover as we move forward with the show, just drop in the comments below and we'll try to get that as we progress. Now today's episode is gonna be all about where we were at two years ago and how we've developed the room that we're in right now. So this first little clip that I'm gonna show you is actually the studio that I was using before all of this uh, to kind of show you the environment that I had come from and what I was working in. You'll see a ton of wires and a giant cluster in this little corner of a room that I was in. So for anybody who's a neat freak, just be pre-warned, this is going to be triggering.
Okay, the first thing you'll notice is everything was really cluttered. We were just in a small corner here. I had a few shelves up for pedals, and then we had a little small desk with a couple of rack spaces on there where I had the interface. Pedals scattered everywhere. I was constantly swapping them in and out and barely could fit my keyboard on the desk. I had amps underneath the desk, wiring everywhere, a couple of old IKEA bookshelves that we put all the amps on in my mics. And then down on the floor, I had a couple pedal boards set up in my 500 series racks and those aux boxes, which are the secret to quiet recording. But we had this big room over here where we had some family staying with us. And when they moved out, we decided, hey, look, this is the perfect time. We can take this old room that used to be a little uh, uh, theater and turn it into something really cool and make it into our own studio. Now the next two clips that you're gonna see were shot on that GoPro I was talking about earlier during setup of the room. The first one is going to show you what we did to separate our studio room from the room above it upstairs. My wife has her office directly above us, so I wanted to make sure to have some soundproofing so that if she was on the phone, it wouldn't bleed down to any audio we were recording down here, and she wouldn't have to listen to anything that was coming out of the monitors here if we need to mix master and listen to music down here. Then the second video is a massive problem we ran into as we started uh, putting the room together. We realized that the wiring in the room was done absolutely crazily and would not work for the environment we wanted to create. So we had to come up with a creative solution for that. Hope you enjoy. We've gone into the ceiling and tried to add insulation through there, a little bit of soundproofing insulation using a mineral insulation rather than like the blow insulation. And it really did absorb a lot of the sound from upstairs. So Aria, what's our next step? Paint. So a little fun drama today. You can see we've got the paint up. It's looking really good here in the room. We even put up some insulation in the windows that we're gonna cover up with more insulation. But we hit a little snag. Turn out all these outlets that were in the wall we're all daisy chained together into one 15 amp breaker. So what I did is kind of following the same pattern down here. I cut four new holes in the wall over here and just wired four individual switches. Now this middle one is still from the old wiring, but I didn't want to have to tear up the walls too much. So I just left that one alone and I dropped four new pieces. And all I did was came in and found behind the wall kind of through this little storage closet, came in here, got behind it, and it's a little hard to see with the lighting, but there's a little bare wall back here where there's no sheetrock. So I just used that, cut the holes out, and ran those to a new breaker box. So now we have four completely isolated 15 amp breaker circuits. So we can plug all of our power supplies into that. That should give us good, clean power with uh, very little crossover noise. So we're one step closer, a few more days and we'll have this thing up and running. Now, once we had the wiring all fixed up, it was time to lay down the new carpet and to start building the studio. Now, the first thing we figured out is that thick carpet is never gonna work. We talked to several studio engineers and they said, you wanna go with a really thin carpet. You don't have to go hardwood floors or anything. So we just used a real low pile carpet that was glued down in these squares. And then once we got it laid down, we realized, hey, this room had an old projector screen in it. So we wanted to remount that on the wall. Where you see the brown on the wall there, that was an old window. We filled that full of insulation, then put a little crossbar on the top and the bottom that we could attach the screen to. And then I added this little metal plate so that I could easily hang the screen and detach it if I needed to. Mounted it up there, screwed it in, and made it really easy. Then we brought in the new desk. Now this desk that we're looking at is the RAB MK88 key desk. This is one of the most amazing production desks I've ever seen. We researched several different types of desks. I wanted something that was more straight on that had a ton of room on it because I wanted to have my keyboard up there. I wanted to have some editing machines and I also wanted to have a place for me to be able to demo pedals. 
And that was going to take a lot of square inches on the desk. So this was the perfect beast. Now these legs that you see here, we just screwed those in in the back. And then there's a couple little crossbars. It took us about 10 minutes to get them to line up and work perfectly. After that, it was super easy. The only hard part of the desk is it weighs an absolute ton. So you can see I had to bring my brother in here to help me get this all set up. But outside of that, it was one of the easiest to assemble desks I've ever worked with. Once we had the desk all assembled, it was time to bring in our sidecars. Now the two that I chose were a matching pair of RAB sidecars designed to the same material that the desk is made out of so that they would match perfectly. Now these are flak pack items, so you have to assemble them yourself. And my daughter really, really wanted to help out as well. So I told Aria she could come down and join me. And for any of you who have kids, I think you'll know exactly what happens when your little one decides that they wanna help you in a work project. So I'd like to share that with you now. Now here you can see Aria helping me set up these sidecars. She was having the absolute time of her life. But seriously, these were one of the easiest to assemble pieces that I've ever had. Uh, very similar material to what the desk was made out of. And really you just had a flat pack similar to what you would get from Ikea. A uh, few things to screw in here and there. It's got really heavy duty casters and uh, really, really thick walls. So I think these will last a lifetime. They move around really simply. Um, one person can easily install these themselves. And really, it took me a combined total of about 30 minutes to set up both units. Now, up next, we had to deal with one of our biggest problems. We had some sound insulation put into the ceiling earlier on, but we also needed to have some sound diffusion here in the room. Now, normally, this isn't a real problem. You can just make some diffusion panels, throw them up on the wall, no issue. But because of that window that we saw in an earlier video, there was a lip sticking out away from the wall that was going to make putting sound diffusion panels up a problem. So I wanted to share with you how we got around that problem and the frame unit that we built in order to install the diffusion panels on the wall. Now here in the main room, you see up on the wall, we've got this window here and it sticks out just a fraction of an inch. So we stuffed it full of that mineral wool insulation that we also used in the ceiling. And I've pre-made these panels, and all these are two by fours that are filled with mineral wool and then coated with a little bit of fabric, almost like a felt-like material. And then I've just taken two by fours and painted them the same color as the wall. And then we're gonna lay this out and just basically build a frame that will elevate those panels out away from the wall just enough to cover that windowsill. So really all you need is about the thickness of a two by four. So we just lay out this two by four frame on top of our panels. And you can see I've got two panels that I kind of drilled together just to make this a little bit easier and then a third panel underneath it so that we could mount these and screw them all in. So I pre-drill the holes, lay it down. You'll notice I am not making a full frame around this. I have to leave the top panel open so that I can get it over that windowsill. That's a real key. If you ever run into a windowsill on your wall, you just need to leave that top open. Add a little extra reinforcement, add a few extra cross brackets. That way you can keep the frame from twisting when it's time to mount it. By putting these little cross corner pieces in there under each one, I make sure when I pick up that frame, it's going to stay perfectly square and level. If you don't do that, I found those frames start to twist a little bit. And then when you go to mount them on the wall, everything's going to be crooked and you're going to have pieces of frame sticking out left and right. And then the other thing that you want to do is pre-drill everything when you're putting these together because when it's time to mount these on the wall, it is a nightmare if you are trying to screw in the panels by themselves. If they don't have pre-drilled holes, it will cause you so many issues. So we pre-drilled everything out, got it all ready to hang up, made it 10 times easier for us to actually function doing this. Now, the one other problem that you're going to see with these is when you start putting everything together, you kind of have to drill it all once, set it all up, then undrill it, take it apart when you're ready to put it back up on the wall. So that's what I'm doing here is just kind of pre-drilling all those holes, getting it framed. Now, I realize it's going to be really heavy, so I went and got my wife. She helped me hold up the frame while I got it all leveled put up against the wall and it's perfect. It creates a lip just past where we want that window to go. And then hanging the panels was really simple. You can do it by yourself. You don't really need a hand here. You just put them up on the wall. And since you've got those pre-drilled holes there, it's really easy to just go back in, add your little cross pieces so that you can drill them in. I just used two little metal plates on each side and then mounted them to the wall. Easy peasy, the thing just went up simply. 
Now the key is you've got to do it in two panels because if you try to cover the entire wall with one gigantic panel, it's just too much weight at once. But it's also way harder for you to be able to install that and be able to take it off if there's ever a problem and you need to add extra stuff. So I always try to do two sets of panels whenever I do these diffusers. So we put this on on the left side. I went ahead and followed the exact same procedure, created one for the right side and hung it up over there and now you can kind of see it in action. So we've got two perfectly mirrored across from each other and it's a great setup here. Everything's flush to the wall and it's creating a ton of soak in the room. Now once we had the panels up on the wall, we took a little break to go on Christmas vacation to see my son. And then as soon as we got back on the 31st of January, 2022, it was time to start assembling the room. Good morning, everybody. Today is New Year's Day of 2023, and so that means we are going to get the set studio set up today and ready to rock and roll. Before we get started, though, I'm going to do a little time-lapse video of bringing everything in, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about positioning and how we're going to set everything up. I've thought about this a lot, trying to get everything ready and done a few different experimental runs just to see how I would use it. And what I've come to find is you want to have everything set up where you can easily access it from the desk. So we have a big desk here. We're going to have a lot of stuff on it, but I've got two side cabs and I've got a ton of amps, guitar products, everything that we're going to put in here. My initial thought was symmetry. I wanted to have, you know, one cab on each side so that we could make sure that everything looked perfect. But what I started to realize is when I'm mixing, I am almost always turned to my right. When I play guitar, I almost always turn to my left. Um, just something from stage and just something from habit. Um, so what I've decided to do is I'm going to put the two side cabs over on this wall. And then I'm going to put all the amplifiers, all the guitar gadgets, everything that we want to do from that aspect over on this wall. It's going to look a little off balance, but functionality wise, it makes a lot of sense because we want to make it so that when I reach over to do things, it'll be easy. Also, because of the way that the walls are set up in this room, I had to set up all of our power on the right hand side. So I want to have all my power heavy stuff, especially the things with shorter cords, be on this side. And then what I've done is I've set up a Furman over here. This is where we're going to plug all the amps into. So we have eight different amps that we're going to be routing through this system. And then we're going to have our speaker cabs over here and a Delisle speaker switcher so that we can just bounce back and forth between the different sounds. So we're going to set it all up. We'll do a little uh, uh, time-lapse video because I don't want you to have to watch me do the whole thing. Um, and then we'll start talking about the individual gear. All right. I hope you enjoy the next part. Okay, so first here we're moving in our sidecar units from RAB, and then we're bringing in all the amps and cabinets. Now the fun part about this is because I'm using a Delisle speaker switcher, which we'll go into in future episodes of the show, um, we don't really have to have a certain head match with a certain cab. We're going to plug all the heads into the Delisle, we're going to plug all the cabs into the Delisle, and then I can switch between them however I want. So really what we're doing here is just a little trial and error trying to figure out how we want to stack everything so that everything fits, looks nice, and is easily accessible. That's all that really matters. So you'll see we move a few things around here until we tr find the right fit. But it was really the perfect space. We had plenty of room for all the amps and with a little room for expansion. Then as we set up the sidecars, you'll notice uh, we do a little bit of experimentation here too. At the top of the patch bay, we've got a, uh, a little XLR patch bay, and these are routed to our preamps. So we've got that coming out into a 500 series unit that's just loaded with preamps. Then down below that, we're going to put another 500 series unit. I actually start by putting the 500 series on the right-hand side and then realized after a few minutes, wait, I actually want all three of my 500 series to be uh, together at once. So I mounted a couple together. The first one's going to be the preamps. The second one is going to be the compressors and the EQs. And then what I'll do is I'll move this third one down and uh, add in actually uh, all the effects. So I have a couple of Moog ladder filters and delays, and then uh, two little radial units that allow you to reamp, but it actually allows us to mix in guitar pedals and effects pedals into your 500 series, which is an amazing thing in and of itself. It basically allows you to turn every pedal that you have into a 500 series unit. It is probably one of the most important pieces of, of uh, 500 series units that I have. It's the EXTC from Radial. And then we added in a little TRS uh, patch bay down below that uses mini TRS cables. 
super handy, a little bit of a pain to label, but outside of that, it was very, very convenient. I think it's going to be a huge addition for the studio. It makes patching all these 500 units uh, way, way easier. So now the other thing that we're doing here is adding power to both units. So we wanted to make sure that we had more than enough power to allow expansion, but also to not starve anything in the racks. So we added in two Black Lion PG2 power supplies. Each one has 12 different inputs on it, as well as USB ports on the front to make it really easy to wire up and supply us with more than enough power. Then on the right-hand side, that rack is gonna be used for some more outboard gear. The first thing that we wanted to put in there was our Echo Fix Chorus Echo unit. Um, this is the FX3, the newest model of it. Uh, Going to be an absolutely fantastic ad. I love my Roland RE201s, but I wanted to have a more modern unit too that we could mix in. And this is just so easy to use and the chorus on it is absolutely amazing. So now that we've got everything set up, we'll look out in the waiting room first. We've got our pedal shelves up on the wall. We've got a little repair area to fix the guitars, keep them clean and polished up. And then I've got a little rack down below for me to put all my mics on. Eventually I want to get a little mic cabinet. Then we added in a little other area that's a seating area where people can hang out. We've got some more pedals up on the wall, the Chase Bliss stuff, and uh, some fun things from Idiot Box up there. And then several of our guitars. We wanted to make these really easy, so we used Coward DRS racks. These are absolutely wonderful. Each one holds a ton of guitars and they don't take up a ton of space, but it makes it so easy. You can just grab your guitars and go. I love not having to grab them all out of a case. Then I also set up a little listening area with some records in it just to make it simple for people to be able to relax and enjoy themselves while we're waiting. Uh, Lord knows mixing can take a while. Then as you come into the studios, you can see all the Don Quixote things. That's where the Chaotic Raven name comes from. We've got some uh, Alex shelves from Ikea. These are fantastic for pedals. We've got them all sorted out by drives. This right-hand side cabinet, all of those are full of fuzzes. I'm a huge fuzz head, so you'll see a ton of fuzzes in there. Then we come over, we've got an ISO cab in the corner, and then we start seeing the amps and cabs just kind of stacked up. I've got two pedal boards on the floor now wired up. And then all of these amps, everything is routed through that Delisle switcher we talked about earlier. Um, that way we can just easily activate it. As we move over to the desk, you'll see we've got the Roland RE201 set up on the desk right next to the demo station. On the floor underneath it, we've got a looper, some compressors, the tuner, everything that we need to be able to play guitar. Then I've got the little demo area set up with the GoPros. We've got the Delisle switcher right there. And then our PMC monitors, the Akai MPC Pro for some beats, and then our Moog. I absolutely love the Sub 37. We'll be talking about that in later videos. And then we come over to our sidecars. We've got our 500 series preamps on the top there. Then it goes down to our EQs and our compressors. And then we've got our effects units on the bottom right above the uh, little patch bay. And then you'll notice we still have the chorus echo in there, but we've added that Loop Trotter Monster 2 compressor. That is an amazing outboard compressor. We've got our Moog Clara Vox for our theremin fun. And then the guitar rack with all of our favorite guitars. It's gonna be a great layout. And that's a first look at Chaotic Raven Studios. We wanna thank you so much for joining us today on What's This Button Do? And we hope that you'll be joining us in the future to get inspired, take a look at different gear, and just try to find creative ways to make new sounds and new music together with you, your family, your friends, and your kids. I'd also like to take a few moments to thank my friends at Palin Music. A few months ago when I posted on my Instagram account at What's This Button Do Dustin, Alec Palin reached out to me and wanted to know more about what I was going to be doing with the studio and how I was going to be having family and friends and, and kids come in to create new sounds. And he loved the idea. So much so that he offered to help support me. He gave me access to his staff. You're going to meet some of them later on. Uh, Nash is an amazing, amazing sound engineer. Um, and Charlie's been a great help in setting up the cameras and figuring everything out to do the recording of this. Uh, so I just cannot thank them enough from the bottom of my heart. And I urge all of you, they are not sponsoring the content on here. They're not making me uh, just show items that they sell or anything like that. Um, but I want to encourage any of you who are in the Kansas City market or Joplin, Springfield, Columbia, anywhere they have a store location, go down to their local store and take a look. I'm a huge fan of shopping local. It's so hard for me to go online and buy an acoustic guitar or an effects pedal that I've never gotten to play before. I love being able to go and get 
get hands on with things. And some of my favorite guitars in my collection have been accidental things that I've discovered when I was down shopping at the stores. You're going to see some of them later on too. Um, and for those who aren't in the, uh, any of their marketplaces, please go onto their website. You'll see it down below at palinmusic.com. Take a look at what all they have to offer and support them however we can. They've just been a great friend of the show and I cannot thank them enough. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. I hope you'll come back next week. We're going to be taking a look at equalization and some of the fun things that you can do with that. So we'll look forward to seeing you then. Take care and have a wonderful week.